harmony, the watchword here, apparent doubt and discord cease. For here is where I find the truth. There is one, the all in all. The truth that makes me free to be, pure love and peace. Dear Lord, for here is where you dwell, in your kingdom nestled in my heart, where everything is well. I turn my thoughts within, dear God, and find pure love and peace. Harmony, the watchword here, apparent doubt and discord cease. For here is where I find the truth. There is one, the all in all. The truth that makes me free to be. I heed its every call. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that is spirit expressed. I find tis me, dear God, and make manifest. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that is spirit expressed. I find tis me, dear God, and make manifest. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that is spirit expressed. I find tis me. everyone and welcome to our lifeline experience this evening. I'm Sandra Cooper, your moderator, and we have a really remarkable guest with us this evening. I'll tell her about, tell you about her in a little while. Uh, we also have with us our pastor, Reverend John Scott. This is going to be a wonderful evening of connect connectivity, liberty, love and laughter. And we're so glad that you could have joined us. And so we're gonna, we're gonna begin now as we always do with our opening affirmative prayer. And I'm going to ask our pastor, Reverend John Scott, to, to do that for us. Reverend John. Ah, thank you, Sandy, and good evening one and all. It's a joy for me to add my own words of welcome to this hour of, as Sandy said, connectivity, liberty, love and laughter, aptly named Lifeline because the science of mind and spirit has indeed been a lifeline to so many people, countless thousands of people, since Ernest Holmes gave the world this great teaching. So let us begin, as all things begin, with God. Please join me in this opening affirmative prayer. Together, we recognize the one perfect and perfecting presence and power God, the source and substance of our very being. We are one with this all intelligent creative presence that is even now uplifting everyone that is turned, tuned in to the spiritual experience we call lifeline. 
There are no degrees of separation here. The connectivity, liberty, love, and laughter of God bind us together with cords of everlasting unity so that we are one. Our featured presenter, Ms. Lorna Phillips, our moderator practitioner, Sandra Cooper, and I, as well as everyone viewing and our technical team are all channels through which the intelligence and mind of the universe find perfect expression and the broadcast is now blessing each and every one of us right here and right now. So I release this word to the law, rejoicing that the kingdom and the power and the glory of God are expressed in this evening's conversation on thriving collaboratively. I truly give thanks that this is already so. And together we say, and so it is. So it is. Thank you so much, Reverend John. And you know, this Lifeline series started about five months ago as one of the initiatives of the Temple of Light to, to support us in thriving and remaining spiritually centered during these very extraordinary times. We wanted to be able to provide spiritual tools and strategies to enable each one of us to rise above and to consciously respond to the challenges being faced during these times. And also to provide the support so that we could, can shift our thinking from fear-based to, fear, to faith-based. Mm -hmm. And so this evening, our topic is thriving collaboratively. And we have an amazing guest and I'm gonna tell, tell you a little bit about her. She is a commercial lawyer an accredited master coach, chartered director, governance consultant, and social enterprise entrepreneur. She's an attorney at law of just shy of 30 years and consulting partner in the law firm Nicholson Phillips. She is founder of the Center for Organizational Governance and co-founder of the Back to Life Foundation, a mentoring organization for boys and for whom she trains the men who mentor them. Her coaching, facilitating and training career spans some 35 plus years and involves a wide array of organizational and developmental interventions. Drawing upon and integrating her legal experience she specializes in crafting unique governance solutions for organizations undergoing transformation, whether through expansion, business succession, or reorganization. She presently chairs the thriving Ministry Council of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living and serves on its board of directors. Lorna is married and has a teenage son. Friends, Join me in welcoming our very special guest this evening, Lorna Phillips. Lorna, welcome. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Reverend John. It's fabulous to be here, Sandy. Thank you so very much for inviting me. This is a, a topic that I love to talk about. Conversation, what could be better? Looking forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. It's all yours. It's over to really? you. Ooh, Yay. Goody, goody. All right. So, so when you invited me to talk on this topic, thriving collaboratively, I wondered how best I could approach it. And there's such a lot to say. So I thought, let me let me jump in first with the individual because when we think of thriving, we think of it as an individual activity. We think. I want to thrive. What do mm -hmm. I need to do to thrive? So I thought, let's start there, if mm -hmm. we may. And I prepared some slides mm -hmm. um, because that should keep me on topic, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So let me make sure I. Okay. So that's there we that's go. Our... There we go. So the individual. And I started off by by looking for a definition. So what you do first, isn't it? You look for a definition. What is thriving? And this is what I found in the dictionary. Well, the electronic dictionary. Um, prosperous, growing, flourishing. I thought, yeah, yeah, that works. That's, that's pretty good. The, the thing is that when I thought about it for me, it didn't really, 
it doesn't give me a roadmap. It doesn't, it doesn't give me a working definition. I mean, yes, I know what it is to be prosperous. Yes, I know what it is to be growing and flourishing, but how do I do it? How does that occur? So um, for me, and this, this, is, this is what I came up with for me as a, a definition, which I, as you'll see, I've turned into an affirmation. And this works better for me because it keeps me on track. So I say I'm thriving because all my needs are met with the expression of my life's purpose. And I find that that helps me to stay focused on what is important, which is the manifestation or the expression of my life's purpose. Mm -hmm. um, now, of course, you know, if, if for others, for people watching, they may not know their life's purpose. I mean, I encountered that quite a bit. I don't know what my life's purpose is. Mm -hmm. um, and it's true. Some people haven't figured it out or it hasn't become real for them yet. And what I would say is, Focus on your values. Focus on what's important to you. Focus upon those characteristics that matter to you. Love of, love of family, um, courage, integrity. You know, those kinds, of, those kinds of things are your values. Discern them and live by those. And very likely will lead you to your purpose. And if it doesn't, that's fine because you'll be still living in accordance with what's important to you. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll notice I use the word needs all my needs are met and I don't use all my wants are met um, and that's for me because um, I want to stay grounded in my responsibility to take responsibility for my life mm -hmm. you know I don't want to be at a place of uh, what shall I call it um, entitlement I don't want to be, have that sense that I'm entitled to anything from anyone at any time or any place. So it keeps me grounded in my own agency, knowing that I, I'm responsible for bringing this about. So that's my version of, that's my definition. But of course, as you're going through your life's journey and you're pursuing your purpose, you're going to encounter challenges. And in addition to that, there are also going to be some blind spots, um, things we just don't see, mm. um, you know, or all the will in the world, we just don't see. Um, and then there are those everyday encounters. It's just encounters with other human beings, with even with our adversaries or people we regard to be our adversaries. So, um, in each of these encounters and in dealing with the challenges and in helping us to see into our blind spots, I don't think that there's anything better than the conversation. And I'm calling it conversation as a spiritual practice. So this is not just any old conversation. This is a conversation that really enables you to connect to connect with another human being, to connect with your own purpose, to connect with your own sense of who you are. Um, this is the deeper conversation uh, that we very often don't have. You know, we, we're very, uh, you know, our lives are filled with the, the sort of superficial conversations, but I'm really talking about a, a conversation as a spiritual practice. And when you're, when you're able to do that, this is when you're able to bring thriving into your life. So I'm actually, what I'm saying, I'm going further than just saying that it's, it's important. I'm saying it's actually crucial for your, for your uh, ability to thrive because truly we thrive in community. So let me just talk a little bit more about the nature of that conversation, if I may, Sandy. Yes, sure. Go ahead. Um, because I think it, it's 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 so infrequently done that I think it's important for us to have at least have a, a, a sense of what the the mechanism is. Um, there's something that I call whole person listening. Are you familiar with that? You know, when you listen with every fiber of your being, you listen with your whole body, and you're paying full attention to not just what the other person is saying, but also to what 
you are thinking and feeling as the other person is speaking. Not with the intention to get your words out next, <laughs> right? But with the, with the intention to really attune to the other person, to really hear their truth at the deepest level. This means lowering your own judgment. Um, it means um, listening to the words that people are using and how they're using them and making every attempt to, um, if you had to, to paraphrase them, to have to repeat what they said, but not say them using your, but using their words, but saying them using your words, really being able to, to repeat what they're, what they're saying in a way that says yes to the other person. Yes, yes, you get me. When you're able to do that mm -hmm. and really connect, that's the place where trust begins to form and where spiritual connection is made. And it's in that space, in that magical space, that wonderful things happen. That's when insights come. That's when awareness comes. Um, that's when solutions to our what we perceive to be challenges come. Um, and I think that, you know, it, it's our life's work ought to be about developing the conversation and using it as a spiritual practice every single day. Every single day and every encounter. You know, Carolyn Miss, um, that fabulous spiritual healer says that every relationship is an opportunity for you to grow and transform your life. And she wow. talks about the sacred contract with every human being that you encounter. Um, so yeah, that's that I think is 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 what I mean about the using the conversation as a spiritual practice. And I'm just going to quote one more person, Thomas Merton, who says that when we are in this in this place, we surrender to the creative action of love and grace in our hearts. Now, if that mm -hmm. isn't thriving, then I'm not sure what is really. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful. You know, Lorna, I, if I may say, Sandy, um, on the night that I was ordained in 2006, Reverend Candy Speckett, who was my officiant, said to me, John, ensure that nobody ever leaves your presence without feeling blessed, that, that you have made them feel special and that every conversation is really a spiritual encounter. And you have just echoed that for me, yeah. um, Lorna. I have God bumps all over. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank and, you. And, and thank you very much from this as well, Lorna, is that, um, so we, we do prayer, we do affirmative prayer, we meditate, mm -hmm. we come to church, um, we affirm, you know, God as all, God as source, and we're doing these things, but with different practice, yeah. which is just a basic one-on-one -on -one in interaction with yeah. each other. Yeah, where we're deeper, we're listening. We're we're um, you talk you talked about the whole person listening. Yes. So yeah. that I'm present to you, your feelings, your yeah. thoughts as mine. Yes. my reactions to what you are saying. And yes. so when I put in my own words what I hear from you, that I get you, Yes. that is where connection happens. Absolutely. That's where trust happens. Absolutely. That, that is where we bond and that is where our sense of oneness evolves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And for me, that's that's really the essence of thriving. You know, if we can really treat every single encounter as a sacred one, then, I, you know, it's, I mean, I don't know what you can't achieve. You know, <laughs> you know what can you not achieve when, when, you, when you see your life in that fashion? Absolutely. When every single person um, and every, you know, mundane, apparently mundane encounters with, you know, you spoke of earlier about meeting up with the accountant and, you know, the lady at the shop or the person on the street. Every single encounter 
is God showing up in your life? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's so important for me to ground my sense of thriving with, with other people and what they bring into my world. So in a sense, I, I, think I, I can't thrive alone. No. <laughs> well, I, I think that the pandemic has, has brought this forcibly to our attention, actually, that we can no longer ascribe to the me, myself, and I way of thriving. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, I think we are acutely aware as a people, as, as a, uh, all of humanity is becoming more and more aware uh, for the first time in human history that we have to perhaps try radically new ways of, of interacting and of being. It, it's, quite, it's quite wonderful. No more me, myself, and I. It has to be we. Yes. How are we does, managing this? How always, are we going to, to do this together? It always has been, I think. You know, I think we've forgotten. Absolutely. You know, we got caught up somewhere along the line. I, I, I blame the sort of 15th century philosophers who gave us the, the, the you know, the me, myself, and I, the we are individuals and oh. that sort of mechanical way of thinking. And we've lost that connection when we separated spirit from our lives and we said exactly. oh, spirit is over here and everything that we do is over here no spirit is part of everything that we are about because we're spiritual beings and so the idea of being able to pull yourself up by your bootstraps first of all i don't know how you do that but it's just nonsense <laughs> you simply can't we are connected not. like it or not <laughs> Yes, we are. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, you know, this this now becomes really, really clear. And of, of course, this is not something we're ever taught as children. No. You know, um, you know, you have a a, a, a quarrel with with a, a, a child. You run to your mom. Your mom said, you know, so um, Johnny hit me, and the mother was likely to say, "Well, hit him back." <laughs> don't hit him. We don't get to talk about these yes. things. And learn yeah. how to do this, yeah. and so this has to become part of what is, you know, the practice that is woven into our, our, our the work that we do Absolutely. at the Temple of Light and in all our church community. Absolutely. So, where else do you take this? What else? Do, um, when, you know, what what is the next level? What's the next stage? Well, you know, all of us, all of us live in community, and all of us are part of. Mm -hmm communities, you know, various different communities. Um, but the one that dominates most of our lives is of course the working community, that's the organization. And this is where I think that organizations have an opportunity to, to bring their gifts to the world through the collaboration of human, human beings working together in a way that individual human beings just simply can't. Mm -hmm. But of course, it multiplies the challenge, right? It gives us this opportunity to practice the spiritual conversation uh, even more. So I thought what I'd do is share with you um, an, or an organization. Um, oh, before I do that, let, let's, let's revisit that definition, which, which I've now put into the organizational sense. And I put it as an affirmation as our organization is thriving because all our needs are met for the expression of our mission and the realization of our vision. Beautiful. Yeah. So um, organizations come together to, to, to deliver on a mandate, to, uh, to, to fulfill a mission or a vision. Every organization comes together for that purpose. Even if the purpose is to make money, there's a mandate. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, mm -hmm. we all bring our individual, our individual stories and issues and baggage. But yeah. I want to just share with you as um, a governance consultant that structures, structures bring their own issues. So they bring issues on top of our issues. So I thought I'd just share that story through Acme Limited as a fictional organization, of course, and they make widgets. I've actually never known what widgets are, but let's, let's say that they make widgets. And this meeting here is just a regular team meeting that's going on. They all look a little bit perplexed, of course, because things are not going as they would like. So this is ACME. This is the classic hierarchy. You've got your leader, your managers, your supervisors, and your frontline workers. 
And let me just go through a few of, you know, what are some of the things that, that some of these people in the organization at the various levels will say. Before I do that, though, let me remind you of something Winston Churchill said, which or is alleged to have said, I'm not sure if he really did, but he said, first we shape our structures and then our structures shape us. Yeah, yeah. and this, is, this becomes very live and you'll see this through ACME. So, so the leaders, what are some of the things that the leaders might say? And you, mm -hmm. I'm sure, if you're a leader, yeah. and if you run your own business, you're a leader, um, or if you've been a leader in an organization, or any of you at home watching this, if you're a leader, you'll have heard this or said these things yourself. I have way too much responsibility. Um, or oh, for crying out loud. Amen. <laughs> Can't someone else make a decision for once? Why do they keep bringing everything to me? Now, remember, you know, the, the, the leader's role is to shape the direction and lead the, the, the body, the, the organization, in a particular direction, in the direction of achieving the goal. And most leaders sign up for this, and they have all the skills and all the capabilities to do it, but it doesn't take very long for them to feel trapped in the role in some way, for them to say things like, I see the challenges. I know we need to respond to, to technological changes. I know my team needs more support, but I just, I just can't give any more. I'm exhausted. I am burned out. How many of us have heard those things or said those things, Sandy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I, uh... <laughs> And then there's a frontline worker because don't forget the frontline work, front worker, he or she is on the front line. They're the ones who have direct contact with the customers um, and they have their own challenges. They will say things like, you know, those bosses, they're out of touch. They don't know what's going on, really. I mean, it's, it's, we know because we're on the front line. We know what the customers want. Um, and when things are going wrong, they're quick to say, it's not my responsibility to change things. It's not my job. It's their job. It's not my fault things are going wrong. They're the ones who have to fix it. Mm -hmm. And then there's that feeling of vulnerability because a lot of frontline workers feel the, the sense that their jobs may be under threat or that if they say anything, something bad may happen. Yes. So they get the sense that they better keep their mouth shut, keep their head down and do what they're doing, even though they can see that it's not working. And let's just deal very quickly with managers. Managers are caught in the middle. And if you've ever been a manager, you know this one very well. I totally get the boss's vision for Acme, but I don't have the resources to give him what he wants. The boss wants a better quality product, but I don't do product. Frontline workers do product, and I can't get them to be more productive. You know, I really understand the frustrations of the frontline workers. They need more pay. They need better conditions. But... I'm not the one who pays them and I can't get the money to give them. Everyone looks to me to give what I don't have. I feel torn and I know workers are leaving. I know they're fed up, but I'm constrained. I can't do anything about it. And there you are. Everyone in the organization <laughs> is holding <laughs> their head. <laughs> and everyone is impacted. Everyone feels helpless. And this is the challenge of what I call the collective organizational blind spot. In between each of us, and this is, has nothing to do with whether we're good people, bad people. This, is, this happens to organizations of all kinds, all descriptions, because systems make us. First you create the structures and then the structures create us. And so in between all of us, there are hundreds of hundreds of blind spots, areas that we just can't see. And the result, well, the result is that we're all so caught up in our story and our issues and our blind spots that we don't even remember what the mission or the vision is anymore. This is acne, of course. So what's the solution to this, Sandy? I think you know. Conversation. There you go. And bring the conversation to the whole system. There you go. 
that but, is but, not you know, something has, is sort of niggling at me. Yeah. Because I'm hearing, you know, that um, we create the system or the structure and then the structure creates us. Yeah. But uh, surely none of this could apply to a church because uh, I just come to church. Yes, I serve, I volunteer and I help. But, you know, how, how does a church feature in, in whole system conversation? Because for, a, for an hour on a Sunday morning, that's it. You know, how can a church affect my life? Just tell us a little about that. How does that work? Well, you see, an organizing a, a church is an organization. And mm. an organization is a system. Now, the, 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 it's very simple. I mean, how often have you gone to church and seen something, observed something, and said to yourself, hmm, I'm not sure I like that. And then you've gone away with it. You didn't say anything to anyone, perhaps because you didn't know who to say it to. Perhaps because you didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Or because, because, perhaps because you didn't think it was your place to say anything. I would wager that just about everybody in the organization at their various levels, in their various places, has that experience at some time or another. Absolutely. And yet, what you have to say is of importance because it's part of the blind spot of the organization that if it were revealed, might make that organization be able to transform or meet its mandate or deliver on its mission. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow, you know, um, this is a point at which I might um, throw in a question. Um, I think it came from Vance, mm -hmm. uh, one of our practitioners, and he asked, how do we cross the divide of vulnerability and mistrust? For yeah. example, what, um, I'm not finished the question, but you know what you said about coming to church and seeing something. I might not speak because I, I might not trust what my sharing, how far it will go, what it will do, and what impact might be on me. And he says, how do we cross the divide of vulnerability and mistrust in order for God to reveal the um, oneness that promotes thriving? Because yeah. we're looking at a different level now, taking our conversation to a higher level. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. Well, it's, it's just really a more complex level. I don't know that it's higher. It's still conversation, and it's still conversation as a spiritual practice. So the principles we discussed before still apply. However, because now you're talking about a system, it's more complex. So this would be an example, if you like, a, a, a sort of visual example of a whole system conversation. Mm -hmm. This is where everybody in the organization now gets to talk to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And remember, it's... Remember Winston Churchill's words. First, we create our structures and then our structures create us. So in a whole system conversation, we create a structure that facilitates these kinds of conversations. And when we practice the art of conversation as a spiritual practice, oh. we develop that trust one to another that enables you to go to a Reverend John or any of the other leaders in the church and to say in the context of trust and that sacred space to speak your truth. Mm -hmm. And, and may I say that if, if, if I have been practicing what you call whole person listening, listening with every fiber of my being, yes. rather than being defensive or, 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 yes. or clever or whatever, Yes. It builds the glue, which is the glue for me in every relationship, Absolutely. the glue of trust. Absolutely. And you feel, I've, I was listened to. Maybe I, I can say what I think, or I yes. can offer an alternative point yeah. of view. Um, yeah. And it's valued and it's treated with respect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I've been listened to. Okay. And, and I think, you know, it's really important for us to, to get out of the habit of trying to fix 
other people's, what we perceive to be other people's problems. We don't have to fix anything. Oh, Remember, it, wow, it's, already, yes. it's already whole. So, uh, can I just add something quickly here, um, yes. um, moderator and Lorna? Uh, my practitioner training group, I, I have two practitioners in training, and we were talking about this business of hand washing with, you know, you know with the COVID um, protocols. And so on Saturday, I gave them a, a, a short affirmation to do every time they, they do the hand washing, and it's to say, I wash away all judgment and mm -hmm. bathe myself in the appreciation of all people. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. I wash yes. away all judgment. If you just say that every time you wash your hands, and God will have been washing our hands. Absolutely. Or when you use sanitizer, I sanitize myself of all judgment. Yes. And just yes. call yes. myself in appreciation of, of wow. the human spirit. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, 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 so just to complete that point, and you make a very vivid example of it, Reverend John. When we talk with one another, there's nothing to fix. They're not, they're, they're not ailing. Um, perhaps they're experiencing a blind spot, but that, or perhaps they're experiencing or think they're experiencing a challenge, but it's nothing that they can't, they can't resolve when they're grounded in spirit. And Absolutely. In that spiritual connection, all sorts of wonderful things become revealed to them and to you. Mm -hmm. So this, this, again, sorry, Sandy, this visual is supposed to represent the, the, the cross conversations that occur. So it's not now just a conversation of the leader to the manager and the manager to the supervisor and the supervisor to the frontline worker. Yes. This is yes. everyone talking. It's talks a matrix of conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Sorry. So, um, wow, there's just so much here. This could, this could be the source of another um, conversation yes. uh, moving forward because this is so deep. Because, you know, having, having had a lifetime of conditioning, of speaking and expressing a certain way, yes. uh, this is going to be relearning, shifting yes. those neural networks around mm -hmm. how we engage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. We, have a, we have a couple of questions um, sure. in our chat. Um, perhaps we could just touch with those now. First of all, I'd like to make a correction. That last question was from Reverend Anne through Vance. Oh, okay. From Reverend Anne through Vance. Okay. And then um, a comment from Carol. Oh, um, Shirley Shaw says, referring to the I and I with re 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 in relation yes. to, to, to conversations. Yes. And Carol yes. says, yes. we all live existing communities. So however that community looks, we're not separate from it. Absolutely right. From it. Absolutely uh -huh. right. Yep. And then um, Doreen, Doreen uh, Malik made a reference to conversations for God um, in which, uh, um, which, you know, questions that were asked right after the point about conversation as a spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. Not sure was going with this anyway all right so that's Doreen if you if you would like to just sort of um ask, you know so yeah we can you know look at it okay and for now okay so so in okay. the system so, uh, in 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 the creation of a whole system conversation we change the the the, the principles so the principles of hierarchy fall away and and this is where everyone has a say every single member of the system has a say um and you know this is this is critical because if you think about how most organizations are structured um people certainly frontline workers people who are deemed to be at the bottom of the triangle generally feel that they don't have a say Mm -hmm. and, and that contributes to their own sense of vulnerability. Actually, and alienation, when, yes. And when you speak, you are actually using your power in the organization and liberating not just yourself, but the organization, because you have a piece of the knowledge of that organization that mm -hmm. it needs to thrive. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. 
so that's part of the system. And, and, and of course, the focus now is about attainment of the mission. Mm -hmm. And so we shift our focus from, you know, perhaps protecting ourselves from our perceived vulnerabilities or uh, trying to, you know, be, be the top gun or trying to win an argument or prove a point because we begin to realize that it's not about that. Mm -hmm. It's about the attainment of the organizational mission, which, which when you think about it, if you are there, the chances are that that organization's mission aligns with your personal purpose. That's right. So okay. once you're in alignment, likely as not, you're fulfilling your life's purpose at the same time as you're helping the organization to, to fulfill its mission. Beautiful. So there's an alignment between your personal um, hopes and dreams and aspirations and purpose yeah. and the organization mission and once those are in alignment you're both heading in the same direction the same direction in, in a glorious synthesis of yep. coming yep. together of, of of spirit and consciousness and absolutely wonderful absolutely and in this system that we've designed this whole system conversation we focus on the future so we don't you know we don't tarry in the past and you know the who said it didn't work it's passed already. There's very little value in tarrying there because what the business that we're in is creating our future. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, and with that together, we bring into the world what we could not bring into the world on our own. We help to create a world that works for everyone. There you and go. We can't do that alone. There you go. Yeah. So, well, you know, Ernest Holmes says a new light is coming into the world. And we are on the borderland of a new experience. Yeah. And I think that's so exciting because that brings so. us to this amazing experience that's coming up absolutely. just around the corner. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Summit 2020. Definitely talk about that in a little bit. Um, so, so, Lorna, um, when we think about church community, then we certainly, there's a lot of work that we need to do. In, in, in creating the shift to be able to embrace um, conversation at this, this level of depth, to have these, these whole system conversations. And, and I'm, the, 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 um, what Reverend John alluded to just, um, I kind of want to hold back a little bit because there are a couple of questions in the chat that yeah. I'd really like to get us um, looking at. Um, let's see, Arlene, she says, people want to be heard. How do you let the team know that they have been heard? Arlene Hilton. Yeah, yeah. And you know, thank you, Arlene. She's absolutely spot on. People do want to be heard, but that's the beauty of the conversation as a spiritual practice. When both parties are practicing commun communing, communing with each other in that fashion, you will feel heard. Um, you will come away from that uh, moment knowing that someone heard you and they you know just by the things that they say back to you you'll know that you're heard and oftentimes that's precious i mean you know just that alone is is a precious that's all you needed at the, in the moment yes yeah to feel precious. valid yeah yep yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know that's we are we're connected spiritually and, and and me knowing myself can only occur through through knowing you Yes. Um, Shesi Boo says the conversation has to start internally within the self. And, and she goes on to say, right speaking, that is speaking with a minimum consumption of energy, mm -hmm. speaking rightly, speaking harmoniously, speaking pleasingly, speaking powerfully, yes. speaking usefully, um, loving you, and, and speaking in such a manner that the speaker remains free from the binding influence of speech. And that's a quote she has shared with us from Maharishi Mahmash Yogi. Wow, that's so powerful. And then Lily says, I noticed that the hierarchy is broken down in the cross conversation. There is there no hierarchy. Go. There you go. That's well amazing. Well spotted, Lily. Well spotted. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. As a student yes. of, of, of governance and uh, organizational structures it's it's my 
considered opinion that um, hierarchy is not necessarily the, 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 the best way to go. It's what we know, it's what we all grew up with. But because we now know that structures create us, first we create our structures, then our structures create us, that potentially um, structures don't, aren't necessary, those hierarchical structures are not necessarily the most beneficial for thriving, for our thriving as human beings. But that may be another conversation, Sandy. <laughs> so we, we are, you know, as, as Reverend John said just now, we are now very excited um, about um, our intention to craft the way forward for our, our church community. Um, yeah. And we are going to be hosting Summit 2020, yeah. in which we are going to have one of these very amazing whole system con conversations to, yeah. to, to look at our way forward. Yeah. How, how do you, um, for, for a member listening um, at this time, what, what should they expect? Oh. Oh, well, they should expect nothing like they've ever experienced before. Oh, so, wonderful. <laughs> this, is, this is not a conference. Oh, that's so exciting. This is not where you sit down and you listen to a whole bunch of supposedly important people talking at you. You are going to be an active participant throughout the entire period. You're going to hear things you never heard before. You're going to speak to people you've never spoken to before. And importantly, you're going to be part of creating something absolutely magical and wonderful. This is uh -huh. not a spectator sport. You're going to play a very integral and important role. This, the whole event is organized around you. Mm. Say a little more about that, please, because I've you know, one can say, but listen, we've had so many of these things in the past and they get us nowhere. Really? All right. So I don't know about the past, <laughs> right? Um, all I can tell you is that my experience of these, um, these kinds of whole system events is that, first of all, I don't know very many that have happened in this part of the world. Mm. I'm familiar with them from Europe. Um, and I don't know that many of them have occurred here in Jamaica. I don't know of them. Um, but my sense is that there haven't been an awful lot, if any. So I rather suspect it's going to be a brand new experience for most people. Um, I, I, I don't want to give away too much because in any event, there's, it's hard to tell you exactly what will happen because the, the, the players, that is all the participants who are coming, they're the ones who are going to create it in each and every moment. Mm -hmm. um, but Absolutely. what I do want to, to say is that the, it's, it's designed for maximum participation. And so expect to come and expect to contribute almost in spite of yourself. You will want to contribute. And at the end of it, uh, all of us will be creating a, a, a temple that we want, that is in alignment with our own life's purpose, and that is fulfilling its, its mission, and that is you know, realizing its vision. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know, frankly, I'm not sure if there's anything more exciting than that. No, oh, I, I am. I am absolutely excited about, about the possibility mm. now, um, you, you said that um, just now that this is something that will help me to fulfill my life's mission yes. who is this how, how will um, participating in, the, in this activity help me personally yeah so so remember the organization ACME and the organization of blind spots right that speak to all those aspects of the organization that are locked in there, but the individuals can't see. But there are individuals in those organizations, in that ACME organization, each of whom has their own aspirations, mm. each of whom have Absolutely. their own dreams and their own desires and that they want to fulfill. And if, they, if we think of our journey, our life's journey as and every individual we meet and every organization that we join 
as part of our sacred, as a sacred contract and as part of our sacred journey, then it means that we are there for a purpose. So wow. all of us who are members of temple are here for a purpose. Not, not by chance, not by chance. No, not at all. And so this activity will help to catalyze that um, purpose within each one of us. And you can imagine the, 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 the explosion that can happen when that happens, when you don't just go to church and sit down and listen um, and then go away and say, oh, that was nice. But you're actually enlivened and feel yes. that you are a part of the yes. creation of the whole. Yes. And, you know, you said something earlier, Sandy, about, you know, have a lot of work to do. I, I don't know. I don't see it as work. I mean, I find this kind of activity so much fun, so enjoyable and so enriching. I don't see it as work. I see it as a process. It's a uh -huh. process, of, a process of creating a radically new uh -huh. way of being. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you know, we have about 10 minutes left. And uh, this, this is such a rich and, and, and full conversation, in fact. Um, just to get a sense of what we can look forward to over the five days of our summit, because it, one of the questions of five days, why do we need five days? What are we going to do? Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, as you've explained just now, it is not a talk shop. No. And so every day, I'm sure, is going to be some wonderful, diverse, totally. fun, magical experience. Totally. Totally. Oh, man. tell us how you're not going to be able to wait for the next oh, day. No. <laughs> yeah, you've got to wish it was over seven days or ten days. You know, yeah, my, yeah, people yeah. end up saying, "Why didn't we have it for for, for a full week?" <laughs> uh, you know, my experience of these events is that when you do one, it's it's so enriching that you you really want to do another one. That has actually been my experience. But I want to make a point about this particular slide about diversity, because, you know, again, we've been conditioned to, to think in terms of, you know, being homogenous. Now, to a degree we are, I mean, to a degree we're very alike, more alike perhaps than we are different. But there are differences between us that I think um, we ought to celebrate. Um, and this whole system way of conversing with each other helps us to celebrate diversity because it, our, our diverse ways of being and the differences that we bring to all of, to the to the whole picture is what actually helps the, the 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 enlivenment the growth the development the transformation because nature is diverse humans are diverse and organizations that thrive are diverse mm -hmm. yeah um and the last thing i think i want to point I really want to make about whole system, a whole system conversation is that oftentimes we think of the system as being just the people inside the organization. Um, but the truth is that other people who are not necessarily inside our organization are also part of our system. Yes, indeed. Um, Acme's customers who buy their widgets for their machines, I suppose, they are part of their system because they know that they buy the widgets because they're good or they know that they're going to stop buying the widgets because they're not good anymore. Yes. Um, Acme's professional colleagues um, are also part of their system and because they have a unique um, piece of information about Acme that only they know through their relationship with Acme. The same for its subsidiaries or sister companies and the same for the suppliers. So in a whole system conversation, we try to bring in even people who we might not ordinarily think of as being part of our system um, because they have something to say. They have a part of our, they have a part of our mystery um, that we want to capture. They're part of us. And so we try to widen the scope and make them a part of the, the event so that they share in the enlightenment and the growth and the transformation. And it, tri it, it has the impact on them, their lives, of course, and the organizations and the communities which they are a part of. Mm -hmm. 
And in oh, that I, part, I think, I think for example, to... of of even guest artists that we have on a Sunday morning, they, yes. they actually don't belong to, they're not registered members of the Temple of Light, but they come in and they share all the love and all the beauty of their talent and their consciousness. Exactly. So they are, in fact, really a part of us. They are. They really Although they're not, they're not regular attendees, yes. but they are stakeholders yes. um, in, in, in what we are trying to achieve. Absolutely. And in fact, are a mirror of our own consciousness. Totally. The fact and that they will come and perform for us so joyfully yeah. and fulsomely. Is, is, yeah. is telling us something about ourselves as well as, a, uh, as about them. Absolutely. Yep, part of our sacred journey. Yeah, and there are tons of persons who provide, provide for us. Um, they, they helped us with our, our technical support, um, rewiring the church, yeah. our security system. These are all suppliers and persons that um, are part of our, our community. Yes. Wow. So, you know, in, in the couple of minutes that we have left, Lorna, um, just to sort of get a sense of um, our, 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 our Summit 2020, this wonderful whole system conversation that, that's coming up, with, um, which is going to be October 17. Well, let me put the um, dates back. Yes, please. October 17, 30 and 31st. Yes. And November 6th and 7th. Yes. Um, so there are, I think, three full days and two half days. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Right. That's so right. we. No, 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 no. Two full days. On it's actually three half days. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so um, a question from Denise, which I was just about to ask: um, Will this be online or at Temple? Ah, an excellent Thank question. Good question. Awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, COVID, I think, has, has answered that question for us. Yes, indeed. But, you know, we're going to take this online. It's going to be very exciting. But I, I must tell you, for anyone who, who is a little nervous about the online space and maybe they don't feel so adept at Zoom, our very own Sandy is going to oh. be doing some, some training on, on Zoom. I don't know, but perhaps you ought to tell them about that, Sandy. Well, um, well what I will say is that when, when the, shut, the, the lockdown occurred in March, up to that point, I absolutely hated online work. I mean, by profession, I'm a facilitator and trainer, and um, any of my clients who suggested doing training online, I would run far. I didn't like it, I didn't want to learn it, and uh, COVID just shifted that completely. I had to learn. I had to learn how to engage with uh, my participants in workshops online. And that's now, now, now it's all that I do. So what I'll be bringing is just what I've learned. And to, um, it's, it's really quite simple. I mean, I resisted it because I thought I couldn't do it. And so um, on the 10th of September, of, of October, we're going to be doing um, a, a two hour training session in how to navigate Zoom so that you can be really up to the, the you know, familiarize yourself with the with how to navigate Zoom so you can be with us during the experience of the Summit 2020. Wonderful, yeah. Yeah. wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Another question. Oh, Lily, um, indeed, diversity of strengths, perspectives, talents and energy can only enrich the whole. Yes, absolutely. And I think that could be a wonderful place to end our <laughs> conversation. We certainly will, will, will see you all at the summit. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to call Reverend John at the, at the, the office or um, a, a suggestion that came in through Steve, practitioner Steve Golding, is that this recording will be available on Facebook and so we can all you know revisit it yeah and um you know get a, a deeper sense of what mm -hmm. we are going to be touching on plus there will be probably persons who who did not um who haven't been able to participate this evening so they'll have a chance to catch up wonderful, wow. wonderful. I'd like to wow. say that Lorna this has been for me a peak experience on the way to the summit because you know <laughs> there are many peaks as we yeah. as we do the climb yeah. and I, I just think this has been wonderful thank you so much for, sh for sharing yourself 
Yeah, thank you. It's been great, great. I mean, I'm so looking forward to not just the summit, but the entire process of getting there. It's yeah. just yeah. Awesome. very exciting, very exciting. We have a minute, Sandy, you know, I've just, I just, as we promised them an hour of connectivity, liberty and laughter, I, yeah. uh, a fellow minister in the USA sent me a, a joke about a, a, a minister who was concerned about um, having, as ministers are, to speak to the, con the congregation about funds, you know, and, and, and m money coming in. And so he said to the organist, look here, you have to find something, you have to play something that will support my talk about fundraising. And the organist said, Lord, anyway, all right, leave it up to me. So the minister got up and said, friends, you know, we really need an inflow of, of, of um, money. And in fact, would everybody who is willing to give at least a hundred US dollars or more, please stand. And at that moment, the um, organist played the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Should try it. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> nice. I know That's they awesome. had no choice but to <laughs> We should, uh, we should put it forward. It's, it's called collaborative, <laughs> thriving collaboratively. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so I want to, uh, Angela is listening in, uh, our organist, I want to say that, our pianist, and Valerie, I want to say that uh, we really appreciate your collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. oh, gosh, Lorda. It has been an absolute pleasure having you this evening. And, and it's been fun. I, so enjoy this conversation. Yeah, me it's too. a Thank pleasure you. working with you, Lorna, and yes. with you all team. It's wonderful. Yes. Yes. And so I'd like to ask if you would do our closing affirmative prayer. Oh, wow. Lovely. With pleasure. With pleasure. Oh, so we breathe. We breathe in deeply knowing that this evening has been an absolute delight. And as we draw, withdraw this amazing and wonderful conversation to a close, we know that it is the divine force that has led us to these gems. And that if it is through our connection with each other, through one another, that that connection that knows absolutely no separation, that we experience our oneness, that is the divine spirit flowing in through and around us. We know that it is this force, this spirit, that is manifesting our highest good in the realization of our individual purpose and our organizational mission. We give thanks for the gift of each other in this conversation as we acknowledge our sacred contracts and our sacred journey, one with another. And I release these words to the divine law, knowing that these precious conversations are working for, for the divine good of all the participants here and watching at home for everyone's highest and best. And so it is. And, and so, so it beautifully is. is. Thank you Namaste. so much, Lorna. And I'd also like to say a very special thank you to our technical support, to Theo Smith, to Vance Gardner and Steve Golding. Also, Steve was, is the author of that beautiful music that, that brought us into our session this evening. Friends, it was just a delight to have you. So I thank you also for being a part of this, this journey. And I look forward to conversation with you as we have our summit 2020. Love and blessings. Have a wonderful and blessed evening.